Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News this Wednesday, September 18, 2013. I'm Gigi Arnetta. Here's what tops the news tonight. Tonight, breaking news that a SWAT team was told to stand down as the Navy Yard shooting was in progress. Then, the controlled media buries the connection of psychiatric drugs to the Navy shooter. And a high-profile church leader ignores the human soul and demonizes guns. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. At the Navy Yard, the SWAT team stood down. They were told to stand down at the mass shooting. A tactical response team of the Capitol Police, a force that guards the U.S. Capitol complex, was told to leave the scene by a supervisor instead of aiding municipal officers. Multiple sources in the Capitol Police Department have told the BBC that its highly trained and heavily armed four-man containment and emergency response team, known as CERT, was near the Navy Yard when the initial report of an active shooter came in at about 8.20 local time. The officers were wearing full tactical gear and armed with HK-416 assault weapons. They arrived outside Building 197 a few minutes later. An official with the knowledge of the incident told the BBC. Wow, the outcome of this thing would have been a lot different, I think, if they would have been able to do their job. Of course, hindsight is 2020, right? Another thing we're not hearing very much about is the fact that he was on a psychiatric drug, and they're not really discussing it in the media at all. Despite every indication that the Navy Yard shooter Aaron Alexis was on SSRI drugs that have been linked to dozens of previous mass shootings, the mainstream media has once again avoided all discussion of the issue, preferring instead to blame the tragedy on a non-existent AR-15 that the gunman didn't even use. Now, Alexis suffered from PTSD, blackouts, and anger issues, all of which are treated with SSRI drugs. And the most common form of treatment for PTSD is paroxetine, which is listed as the number three top violence causing drug by the Institute for Safe Medication Practices, also known as the ISMP. Now, with PTSD, taking drugs like this can be very risky because there are a lot of side effects, and some of them are very, very adverse. But the other thing they're not talking about is why this guy was able to get a security clearance. It's not easy to just get a secret security clearance, but for some reason he made it through the system despite of all his issues. Now the official story ignores in the intelligence connection and pushes gun and mental illness propaganda ahead of the next attack on the Second Amendment. Now Hoshko actually works Hoshko, a central figure in subtracted military information technology, said that he has questions, too, about this whole thing. He says he's working with authorities to figure out why somebody didn't see a pattern or certainly flag this back in 2007 when all this other stuff happened with him. Now, he's known to have misconduct and a couple of run-ins with the police and also that he has PTSD. But when you get a security clearance, these things actually get in the way of you getting a clearance. Let's take a look at how to get a security clearance. Now, the first thing an applicant has to do, obviously, is go through the basic application process, which includes your verification of U.S. citizenship and fingerprinting. The last part is the adjudication phase, during which findings from the investigation are reviewed and evaluated based on 13 factors. Now, some of these factors are uh, your criminal background and personal conduct, which obviously didn't happen here, uh, your history of substance abuse and any mental disorders. And of course now with this gentleman there was personal conduct issues reported in the Navy and out of the Navy. Substance abuse, he was a heavy drinker they say, and also the mental disorder that he has um, that has been revealed and also the mental disorder that was revealed in the last 24 hours that he was going through and he had talked to the VA about that. There are a few other intrusive questions that come out, uh, including you can also have a polygraph done to you and questions to your neighbors, which they did not do in this case, clearly. But stick around till after the break. We have more news. Earlier this week on Infowars.com, Paul Joseph Watson wrote an article that the former NSA director, Michael Hayden, said that he advocates a Chinese-style internet takeover. Former NSA Director Michael Hayden says he has a problem with the Internet. It's anonymous. Hayden compared the Internet to the wild, wild west, 
a law is free for all, indicating that he'd like to see the U.S. adopt a system of web policing much like that used in communist China. In order to crush dissent, users there are mandated to provide their real names, addresses, and identification numbers before they can use services like the heavily censored Chinese version of Twitter. The ruling Communist Party routinely censors keywords and scrubs entire conversations that contain politically sensitive information. Prominent bloggers who attract millions of followers as a result of criticizing the government are now being arrested and forced to confess their crimes against the government on live television. In what appears to be a move to intimidate online opinion leaders from speaking too freely or critically of the government. Hayden's not the only one advocating the move for a Chinese-style World Wide Web. Senator Joe Lieberman invoked cybersecurity in his attempted kill switch bill in 2010. Lieberman said, right now the government in China can disconnect parts of its internet in case of war, and we need to have that here. We reported in 2011 about the Obama administration's plans to develop a national internet ID system. The so-called National Strategy for Trusted Identities in Cyberspace would be a voluntary identity ecosystem where all of your information will be stored on a smart card, cell phone, or some other gadget which you would use to access a myriad of info like your tax returns, banking statements, health information, basically a passport to your entire life, which you'd only be able to access via the internet if you volunteered yourself to the system. The IRS, Homeland Security, and banks everywhere have already been caught red-handed abusing and mismanaging account information, and now they propose that they provide the management for a single sign-on system that's going to affect tens of millions of citizens. Your ID provider would not know how you use your credential. There is no central database tracking your actions. Oops. Busted. <laughs> Sorry guys, but Edward Snowden already blew that lie wide open when he informed the world about PRISM. Cybersecurity is being used to justify the push toward a Chinese-style internet ID system and censorship. But the U.S. government might just be the biggest hacker of all. It's really important that we stop cyber attacks. And the way to do that is to make our cyber systems more secure. But the problem is the government's doing the opposite. They are funding the creation of vulnerabilities. They are offering rewards for people to find and build vulnerabilities into the system and give it to the U.S. government so then the U.S. government can launch cyber attacks in other countries. Hayden himself said that the U.S. could be charged with the militarization of the Internet. But it's this very cyber warfare that's given cybersecurity advocates the justification they need to arm President Obama with an internet kill switch. And if the U.S. government stages a cybersecurity false flag to cripple the web and threaten national security, well that voluntary ID program will become mandatory for anyone who wishes to use the internet. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. The Starbucks CEO says your gun is not welcome in his coffee shop. Now, they're not planning on actually stopping people with guns, but he says it's a gun-free zone, and the presence of a weapon in our stores is unsettling and upsetting for many of our customers. But to be clear, Starbucks will not slap an outright ban on guns, he says, because enforcing such a ban would potentially require our partners to confront armed customers. So even if people are carrying guns in the store, they are not going to approach you and tell you to get out. So this is probably a politically correct maneuver on his part. And talking about guns, Rick Warren recently said that he forgives the person who sold his son a gun. Rick Warren was on Piers Morgan last night, and you would think that Piers Morgan wouldn't want to have him on that often since Piers Morgan hates the Bible as much as he hates the Constitution. But he's always been very polite, very deferential to Rick Warren, especially last night. And it wasn't just because of his recent loss. It's because Piers Morgan knew that Rick Warren would push the gun control agenda. Rick Warren's son committed suicide with a gun that he illegally got in California. Where did he get this gun? We now know that he had mental health issues his whole life. Yeah. Well, he didn't get it legally, that's for sure. The gun laws in California are very strict, and they worked. I... We're, we're grateful that the laws kept Matthew from getting the gun for as long as it did. Warren thinks that the California gun laws are great, even though his son was still able to get a gun. 
Anyone who is determined to get a gun will get one whether it's legal or illegal. Prohibition doesn't work. Alcohol prohibition didn't stop people from getting booze. Drug prohibition hasn't stopped people from getting drugs. All it does is increase the availability and the lethality of the things that we're trying to prohibit. It also breeds political corruption, gang violence, street crime. It doesn't work. We just saw a shooting in D.C. where there's more gun laws than anywhere else in the country, and it was done inside a military facility. It's just like people dying from drug overdoses in federal prisons. But don't expect Rick Warren, Piers Morgan, or their followers to have a single moment of cognitive dissonance as they push for even more laws that are ineffective except to harass legal gun owners. He wanted one as far as you're aware for one purpose. Oh, only one purpose. I have to say, Piers, one of the hard things was forgiving the person who sold him the gun. Because they prayed. Because I didn't want to forgive him. Rick Warren doesn't blame himself, doesn't blame his wife, doesn't blame his son. I don't blame them. I don't know what I would do in that kind of a situation. But Rick Warren is looking for someone to blame. So he passively blames the person who sold the gun and says that he forgives that person. Well, that person doesn't need his forgiveness. Selling a gun to someone is not assisting in a suicide any more than selling a rope to someone where they turn around and hang themselves with it later is helping that person to commit suicide. If his son had committed suicide with a car, should we prohibit cars? Should we hassle people buying cars with ineffective laws? I'm here because my grandfather successfully defended his life with a gun without even firing it. Guns are simply a tool. They're an inanimate object. It depends on the person who is using it, whether it's used to save lives or to take lives. Of all people, Rick Warren should understand that it's the person that matters, not the inanimate object. If he doesn't have the wisdom to understand how guns can be used in self-defense, if he doesn't have the wisdom to understand the political implications of how guns can be used against tyrants, he should get out of the debate and not be a tool of the gun grabbers like Piers Morgan. For InfoWars Nightly News, I'm David Knight. Recently on InfoWars, we had a chance to do a story on gun confiscation dealing with the Veterans Administration. And George Heminger was able to actually talk with the VA doctor and get the details on the situation. George, thank you so much for joining me today. Hey, no problem, Gigi. Thank you for having me on. So let's just jump right in. Right now, the topic of the Veterans Administration is really hot. What was that interview like? Well, I mean, I kind of happened upon this uh, after we interviewed uh, the U.S. Navy vet that uh, had a forced psychiatric evaluation, a wellness check. They confiscated his permits and took his guns and uh, had forced hospitalization. Uh, actually, people within the VA system started contacting me, and one guy I did respond back to was a VA doctor out of Florida, and we ended up doing an hour-long interview in detail of how the VA administration is uh, progressing a nationwide gun confiscation program that's been going ongoing for years. And the good thing about the video is that it really goes into detail from a doctor's perspective what they have to do to go ahead and take the guns from the veterans. And uh, it's, I think it was so scary at the time that a lot of people ignored it. So hopefully it'll see the light of day and more people will be able to see exactly what's going on internally with the VA uh, hospital system. Now, George, where can we find it? I realize that it's not on George for Title anymore, your YouTube site, but what can people do to find it? Yeah, this information was really hot to handle. Uh, I initially did the interviews with another gal that I ran a website with and she took it down. Um, he actually wanted to retract the video because he was uh, he was afraid that uh, they were gonna come after him. Uh, there were some issues with some uh, voice modulation with the video, but if you type into you, uh, Google, VA doctor, gun confiscation, the video will come up and you'll be able to watch it. And basically for, you, for those that don't know, we did an article here at Infowars.com covering this where there was actual kickback for this for the VA doctors who are taking guns from the veterans, willingly or unwillingly. And I really wanted to talk a little bit about that, George. When you spoke to him, he mentioned that basically they were going to take those guns whether the, the, the person was going to allow it or not. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how they did it? Yeah, he gave me some intimate details of how they are um, 
how basically they make their money at the VA system. And a lot of it is incentivized. So there's a whole lot of work on the ground that doctors do that they get incentivized for. It could be anything from uh, helping uh, teach other doctors. And in this case, he mentioned that they were paid $3,000 to take away guns from veterans. So there's there's actually a financial incentive to go ahead and uh, try to take the take the guns of veterans uh, that are red flagged on their questionnaire system. And now there, there's the funny part. Some of those red flags are, it's not really funny, I suppose, but some of those red flags are if you're a patriot. Yeah, I went into detail with him. It's on the video where I asked him, you know, what's going on with these questionnaires that you're that you're doing? And he says, when you come in, and we don't want to scare uh, veterans from getting any medical help, but they need to understand, at least from this doctor's perspective, that the questionnaires are getting very, very intimate, very, very detailed. They want to know all your family history. They are doing bipolar screening, depression screening, all types of family work history, anything and everything they are putting down in these questionnaires and these interview systems. And then they will use that against you. If you have anything that is showing any type of mental situation, any type of stress situation, they can go ahead and use that. Working with local law enforcement to take away your guns, do a wellness check, and then end up, uh, you know, you might end up in a situation where you're hospitalized against your will. Well, might basically what they're saying now, it seems like, is if you don't answer things that the, the way that they tell you to answer it, uh, it, whether it's, hey, do you have a weapon, and you answer, well, that's none of your business, then that's automatically yes. Yeah, you're already red flagged. When mm -hmm. you just stand up for your rights or you display your political affiliations and they're not in line with Obama, uh, and that's where I tried to get to the heart of the matter. Where is this all coming from? And he, on his level, was a little bit confused. He believes that the game plan to take away the guns is really going to come from the Department of Health and Human Services, perhaps Homeland Security, uh, but that's really the target of how they're getting the veterans. And right now, there's so many veterans that are on medication, sleep medication. Uh, they're, uh, they get benefits for post-traumatic dis distress disorder. And they also get those benefits, Not they don't have to be in combat to apply for those benefits. They could be in a car accident or they could just be having stress or some type of anxiety. So I think the latest statistic was like 40% of our veterans have some type of uh, po post-traumatic distress and uh, they're getting services from the VA. They need to understand while they're getting those services and benefits, they can use that as a in, way, in ways, a pathways to take away their guns. Well, sure. And this is this this flies in the face of HIPAA. You know, where we're supposed to have uh, doctor uh, uh, patient privacy. You know, who's getting this information? Uh, you know, and how are they using it against you? Is that really even? Uh, a, that sounds to me almost against the law. Well, and the thing with it is, is they're saying, hey, come on this way. You have PTSD. Here's your prescription. And the thing is, they're making it so easy for them to have the benefits that it's a lure. They just don't realize yeah, what they're I walking mean, into. Some of the questions, he actually goes into detail, the exact questions he asks. And questions that he asks are, do you feel the government can watch you? Do you feel the government wants to take your guns? And if you say yes, or you answer in with the wrong wordage, they can go ahead and classify you as paranoia. And I said, hey, what happens if you say you watch Alex Jones or you're against Obama's policy on the wars? And he said that could be interpreted. I mean, it's very, very political. And he says a lot of these VA hospitals are aligned with leftist leaning liberal institutions and they're 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 against gun rights in general. So it's he basically says from the top down uh, over the years, things are getting more um, uh, in a way where they're going after guns any way, any way they can. Well, it's accelerating under the Obama administration, no doubt. Yeah. And I'm sure Obamacare will be able to, and I don't know if this is the first step in gun confiscation with regards to the general populace. At first, they're trying this out using doctors against the veterans, and then all of a sudden when Obamacare kicks in, they're gonna use regular doctors to go after regular civilians. You know, those are questions we just don't know the answer to. Well, and I'm trying to get my hands on some paperwork right now because on the internet, it seems that people are visiting doctors now pediatricians, cardiologists, whatever, and the form, they actually ask from a form, and it asks if you have weapons in your home. Now, what that has to do with your doctor's visit, 
I guess it's just it, it, it has nothing to do with your dog, though. That's informational gathering for law enforcement and for other agencies we may not be aware of. I mean, if you are a, um, a veteran and you're seeing your doctor and for maybe a sleep issue or maybe you're having depression or something and uh, they all of a sudden say, hey, you know what, we're calling the VA police and they come in and they say, we're going to have to get you to surrender your firearms and you're going to be hospitalized, forced hospitalization for two or three or four days. That can evoke uh, a very stressful response and they can use that against you. I mean, this is involuntary hospitalization in a psych ward. This is what they do to intimidate you and to basically raise additional red flags. And that's how they go ahead and take your guns. Now, you also know about the man in Connecticut that had that happen, too. Exactly. Well, just by pure luck, I primarily cover stories here locally in Southern California. I talk about the economic collapse. I talk about peep families, you know, basically living on the streets, my own personal struggle. But, you know, by being out there on the Internet, I have a lot of people that contact me sometimes faster than maybe they'd be able to contact InfoWars. And uh, Dave Schmecker was one of those individuals that contacted me. We got him up online and he basically was forced out of his house. Uh, they took his guns out of the gun safe that he had and they hospital they forced host uh, hospitalized him for four days and then he had to deal with the reoccurring um problematic issues of dealing with these agencies and trying to get his guns back right now i don't know what happened to dave but i believe he was on your show yes i was going to say for our viewers you can go to infowars.com and you'll find the interview also alex talked to him and I want to ask you a couple more questions right now regarding gun control, because I hear in California, Jerry Brown has a list of laws that are up on his table. Yeah, I think uh, California is really in the running as the poster child for gun confiscation and uh, uh, limiting our Second Amendment rights. Uh, there's been about 30 pieces of anti-gun uh, legislation that has been passed this year alone. And I think Jerry ha Jerry Brown, the, our governor, has about seven pieces of legislation. Uh, you can look it up online. But there anything from uh, banning all semi-autos with a detachable magazine to banning all lead ammo in hunting. So they just basically this is a progression in California of trying to take away any gun rights that uh, that you may have. And I've talked with people that own semi-autic uh automatic weapons and they uh, are totally confused and George is totally confused what's legal and what's illegal and George we're running out of time so I wanted to quickly before we we disconnect here uh, apps can you tell us about apps real quick in about 10 seconds okay uh, real quick apps is a uh, a law that passed in California it's called the armed prohibited person system definitely do your research it it creates databases and allows uh, multiple law enforcement agencies to go after individuals that may be a threat that own uh, weapons in 2011 they seized 1200 firearms they seized 155,000 uh, rounds of ammo and what they are doing uh, what I've been reading and hearing is that they go to houses and under threat, under intimidation, get people to voluntarily give up their weapons. And if that doesn't work, then they go ahead and we see what happened in Citrus Heights, Sacramento with Joe Mendez, where they go and they point an M16 at your head and uh, they take away your weapons and they bankrupt you through the court system. Well, George, this has been great. I look forward to doing this again. Thank you so much, Gigi. Take care. All right, you take care. And of course, you can find out more about George Heminger and his very unique lifestyle at his YouTube channel, George for Title. That's George, the number four, and Title on YouTube. And there you'll also find a little bit more about what's happening at the VA if you type in Gun Confiscation Veterans Administration. It's very sad what's happening to our veterans, and we can only hope that things will get right in this country. Thank you so much for joining us on the InfoWars Nightly News. Remember to be back here tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central.